All right, we're gonna unbox this. Uh, I've got a chain grinder, nice old school unit. Um, I did notice a couple things that was missing and I got some fresh grinding wheels and a handle and uh, a wheel dressing stone. So here, let me pause this and then uh, we'll start opening everything up and see what we got to work right, with. I'm gonna try and do this. You know, the pictures, of, I bought this off of eBay, obviously you can see the back of the tape. And the pictures were decent and the seller had good feedback. And from what I can tell, it didn't look like this uh, had a ton of use on it. So, all right, on the bright side, I don't see any broken pieces in the box. And that really didn't do a whole hell of a lot. But uh, this is an older, um, either Tecamec, you know, this looks just like the Oregon grinders because this shared design is used by Oregon, Tecamec, um, Efco. I like these old school ones because you'll see here in a second and that, uh, you know, it's not that they're definitely made any better. You know, the casting's all about the same. You know, these parts were shared um, among the brands. Uh, but the biggest factor is, is that, um, here, let me unplug the tree here. Oh gosh, it's upside down. And that's bent. Um, I think one of the biggest differences is that these old school, uh, Oh, yeah, it's on. Okay, motor sounds good. <laughs> Should have checked. But the cool thing is, is on this, and I'm hoping this is the case, that, here, let me get a little bit better light on this. You've got forward, so this is rotating counterclockwise when I push this switch forward. Yes. Okay, so this gives you the opportunity to grind into the tooth like a professional grinder. The, I used to have an old Sylvie and I sold it. Um, just a round grinder, not one of the cool square grinders. That's still on my wish list, but they've gotten high as a giraffe's ass since Sylvie closed more and more every year. So anyway, we'll... uh show you the features on how to set this up and how to get some good results. This older Fco wheel may be pretty decent, I don't know, but the Oregon grinding wheels, and this is something you'll have to think about. Um, if you've ever used like sandpaper or Scotch-Brite pads or any kind of abrasive, there's my little, there we go. Um, there's a huge difference when it comes to abrasives. So what I've had good success with is buying these made in Italy, um, Tecamex. They, uh, the green ones are decent. They're definitely a step above. These white ones are harder woodpecker lips and it cuts so good. Um, so I've got two of the 316s for the 3 8 chain and I've got one skinny one for climbing chain for the 3 8 low pro slash Oregon, or excuse me, steel Pico. So the better grinding wheels, well actually I may leave this one on and we'll grind a little bit with it once we get it set up and I'll show you how much easier it is to burn a tooth with a substandard grinding wheel than it is with a high quality abrasive wheel. Oh Lord, I don't know what's gotten into me. Anyway, I'm gonna clean this thing up a little bit. And uh, you know, I took apart the deck on it and it's got some ancient grease in it. I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and put it back together. And then we'll actually figure out how to use this. Okay, got it all cleaned up and, you know, this not restored kind of condition, but 
cleaned it really well. You know, and you, you can't get too crazy about cleaning these because they just get absolutely disgusting with all the metal filings and remnants and stuff. So this did not have a handle on it from the factory. Um, so I bought a handle, mounted it right here. Much easier than just using the palm of your hand. Um, what was the other thing? Yeah, this came out nice down here. I wasted way too much time cleaning up this whole assembly. I got out of the bench grinder with a wire wheel and shined it all up. You know, and it'll only get nasty. So, you know, don't spend a whole lot of time doing that. Anyway, um, we're going to do a little grinding here. And I've got, and I want to do this for like real world stuff. So this chain's dirty. And I find that, and moreover, let me get down in here. You know, see how the top of that's rolled over. I mean, you know, it's been put in the dirt. You know, so this isn't just going to be a quick touch up kind of uh so these will actually be ground correctly just because they're well damaged so if you're inexperienced you're going to find yourself putting it in the dirt if you are experienced occasionally you're going to find something in the tree so um, i don't want to teach you how to touch up a chain that just needs just a kiss just to do that i i think it's better to understand how to use the machine um oregon says you know go ahead and set it up for 30 degrees on the radius and there's this guy down there right there i got it set at 25 i do a lot more hardwoods around here so less angle will stay sharper longer um in hardwoods with if you know you're gonna be cutting softer woods then uh a third 30 degree angle is perfect um and here on the back if i can get you in there so the factory settings oh gosh factory settings say set this at 55 well, you just take my word for it it's set on 55 let me get set up um so when you get a brand new wheel See how that's just got like a nice round radius all the way around it, you know, and that's great. But as you use this, you're going to have to touch it up and I'll teach you how to do that. You know, here on the other hand, you know, this one was just ground on one side. See if you can take a look at that profile. So. All right, let me get set up and we'll start grinding some chain. Oh, got to have sharpening fluid when you do this too. All right, let's talk about adjustments. We already talked about the tilt of the head at 55 degrees is where you want to start. This is your height adjustment right here. And it's a stop for, this will help with your consistency. Instead of just reaching down there and freehanding each tooth, Use this because it will touch right here and you can adjust this forwards and backwards to raise and lower the height. So that way, you know, you're getting consistent results every time you come down height wise. Um, you know, you've got your angle that you can choose on the front and then right here, this advances and retracts the tooth. All right, so without, let's get into grinding some chain. So I'm gonna advance this forward. I'm gonna pull back on it. And you see when I pull back on it, the tooth is cocked up in the air. I know, I said it. Whoops, that moved. Here, let me tighten that up just a touch. Lock that down and let's just kind of eyeball it at first. All right, I'm making some contact with the front of the tooth. 
and let's just back up just a little bit. Again, make sure that sits down flat. Turn that on. And I went back too far. I'm not touching the, uh, so let's set our height right now. And I'm just putting firm pressure on the head and then lowering. So let's bump this forward just a little bit. Lock it in place. That's good. And you want to go lightly. And you see, like right here in the front of the tooth, you can still see some of that shiny area and right there in the corner. And I don't care if you're filing with a grinder, I don't care if you're filing with a hand file, you've got to get back to clean metal. So this dented corner right here has to be ground back. Otherwise, as it goes to the wood, it's just going to beat that right back in and it will dull super fast. So where were we? All right, let's move it forward just a little bit and then hopefully we can find a nice setting all the way around. You've got to go nice and easy. And I prefer to go down through it because you see I've already touched that three or four times and I'm still making some contact right there. You'll have some deflection. You want to make sure that this tube doesn't wiggle too much. I really can't lock that down much more. All right, let's move this forward. It gets easier, you know, once you get this thing set up and you can actually, but again, you've got to go nice and easy. I'm at my stop, I can't go down any farther. We're still not there yet. We've got damaged tooth to grind away. We're almost there. And we're not deep enough yet, so I just move my depth setting down a little bit more, and then move it forward. Do these in little small steps. Now you may or may not be able to see it, but there's still one little corner right there. We are not into fresh side plate. Look at what we got. It's still not there. Just a touch more. Yeah, let me make sure that I'm flat. And that's nice and tight. Nice. Move. Oops. Sorry, y'all. It's taking way too long. stop let's uh take this out and see what we did all right there's our top plate nice clean metal forward where's my where's my pointer at oh gosh nice clean metal across the top edge and the side edge just as if you'd hand filed it and if i take you in you can see the damage on these teeth. So that has to go away. Right there. All that has to be ground off, whether you're using a, a grinder or a file. Let's look at our side profile. That looks pretty good. You know, we've got decent hook. We're down here. The gullet's all taken out. And that's from that height setting, the depth of cut. And that's where you get that nice looking hook where you know you're going to cut well. And obviously, you know, you'll have to go back and adjust your rakers. We've actually taken enough off this tooth. So let's throw this back in the grinder and do a couple more and see how we do. There's one more adjustment before we go on to the next part of this. So this stop pawl right here has an adjustment on it. And you can see that it's right in the middle. If you are down to a the last half of the tooth, it does matter how far in 
or out. This has got a little spring on it. It's not moving too terribly much. And you can get it out of the way. So when you tighten this down, it's not in the way of the grinding wheel. You'll see what happens when somebody doesn't use this adjustment to keep your stop paw out of the way. And obviously trying to use that to hold this steady. And this is the key. This is where you see all this adjustment. So you got plenty of room to screw shit up or you have plenty of adjustment to custom grind something. You know, once you just do a, a plain old, good old fashioned, you know, Oregon recipe to do this. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit, you'll have to be patient. So, cause we're taking off a quarter of the tooth to get us back to where, look at that. Here, we're gonna have to back this up just a little bit. I think that's, that's coming in a little too hard. Go in nice and easy. If you don't have patience, <laughs> listen to the motor. If you hear the motor bogging down, you're going too fast. going to need that last little bit because I still see right there in the corner that uh, it needs to be touched up. Okay, all the uglies off of that. Let's, um, let's stop right there. All right, whether or not this nice, fancy, clean grinding wheel would do it, Let's see what happens when you just get impatient and start to drive it in there. You don't want to overheat the tooth. These grinding wheels are really nice. Normally that would have turned cherry red on the leading edge. So, but if we look at the results we got, you see there's a burr of metal right there on top. So you're not gonna get a sharp edge. It's not, it's not sharp at all, just cause you've got that rolled metal. Um, cleaning and dressing your wheel. You know, this is a brand new wheel. And just from these couple of teeth that we've ground, you see what's starting to build up in the stone. All right. The more buildup you have in that grit, the more friction you're going to have when you grind. Okay. You can, you can use something like, um, either brake clean or something like that while it's running and spray off this, or it's easy enough just to grab a, um, a dressing brick. Here, let me grab one and uh, I'll show you how we re how we dress this wheel. Okay, so when should you dress the wheel? Whenever you've got enough buildup or you stop seeing a significant amount of sparks or you're overheating a tooth or you just don't feel like you're getting anywhere. When, you know, when you're, when you're going in there and it just feels like you're pushing a little bit, even with those light strokes, it's just not removing. So it's time to dress that. So it's just real simple. You don't want to... Do too much on the leading side. Wow, these are really soft. Here, let me try my other one. And I'm just gonna eyeball it until I see that same nice profile that we saw earlier. And you know, you can play around with it a little bit, you know. So we look at it straight on. I still have that nice uniform radius. Because whatever the shape of your grinding wheel is, is what the shape of your tooth is going to have. You follow me? 
Um, so dressing these is key. If you look out there and if you've got one and you're having problems and you're looking, it is just nothing but pure black on the outside of this. That's why you're not grinding worth the shit. Okay, so I made one adjustment and I won't bore you with the details, but I changed the angle of the head down to 50 degrees. So that means I'm coming in at a greater angle. So where are we at? This is the one I just did here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. And this is gonna look a little bit more like something hand filed. You see the amount of hook that's in there? And this one right here is the first tooth that we did. Let me see if I can't turn this a little bit. And it's got a little bit of a hook to it. But you know, you can start working on this. And now with decreasing the angle of the head, what you'll end up with is a sharper angle on the top plate of the tooth. So technically you should be, uh, that's, you can see that's, that's got some good grip to it. So yeah, can you get factory results with this? Sure can. Can you improve and get hand file quality? You're just gonna have to work on it. I do wanna show you one last thing about using this machine. But if so far this has been entertaining to you, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. I hate to say that shit, but it's necessary. All right, and let me show you one last thing and we'll call it done. All right, all of these machines have got a little bit of give and play when, when you pull it out. So make sure you're coming down nice and straight, nice and easy. We'll finish this pass and then I'll show you something. Okay, and moving down that same consistent, I'm barely even touching anything, okay? Now, if I pull down straight, you can't see it, but I can see daylight in the hook in the, in the recess of the tooth. Or if you lean into it, you can keep taking metal off of it the more you lean on it. So just be consistent with how you pull down, because there is an amount of flex in these machines where they don't stay incredibly rigid. So take that into account. Make sure, here, let me turn this off. Make sure that when you lock this into place that you're consistent and you know the tooth's not cocked up in the air and that it's snug against it. You know, you're actually pulling back and putting some tension on this, keeping, Make sure that you're as consistent. I will say this in closing. These machines are only as good as the operator. When you take these out of the box and you just start hammering away at it, it, it you've got to understand that you're part of this process. The machine is no genie. It is not going to do everything for you. You're going to have to be part of the process. But, you know, the more you know your machine, the more you'll enjoy it. And once you get it dialed in, you can play around with some different grinds. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the hexa chain from steel, if you go back and look at my videos, I've got one where we actually do a completely different profile on the grinding wheel and get a completely different grind that actually works really well. And it's super simple. So, um, again, thanks for coming along on this. I hope you enjoyed it and, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Okay. One last thing, and this is actually pretty important and I'm sorry I didn't include this. So just to take off anything, this is a piece of brand new chain. So I've got it where I'm just barely touching anything. You know, I mean, I took a whisper off of there. I didn't want to make contact with the raker. So when you flip this over and set it at the same angle, and you do the other side. Man, I don't even know if you can see me or not. Um, here. It's...
all right, so here's what I'm getting at real brief. You're going to have to, even though we haven't done anything, we've got a brand hammer new tooth sitting in here. The, the angle's set at 25 degrees, just like it was set at 25 degrees over here. When you come down, it's not even touching. You'll have to actually make some minor adjustments on your first tooth to the other side. Don't think you don't have to manipulate anything. Sometimes the angle on this little plate right here isn't exactly right. So, oh, you can't see that now. Back you out. And over here, I'm not even touching. And the, the depth and the, the height, I'm a mile away from, so I'm going to lower this, lower it, lower it, lower it, and I finally hit the gully. Okay. So if you understand what I'm saying, that even though you're doing the same thing and all you did was just, you know, switch directions, you'll still have to tweak some minor adjustments. After you get through grinding this tooth on the other side, you'll want to take it off, look at it and inspect it and see if you've got the same profile on the side of the tooth, the same depth, and make sure that your teeth match. I think this is super important to get a nice, straight, cutting, quality, home ground chain. Okay, that's it. Y'all have a great night. Thank you.